Hi, and welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Rachel, and we're here in Green, in the village of Green Hills, Ohio, with Wendell. Hi, Wendell. How are you? Good. So I understand that uh, this was all farmland until 1936. Right. And then the government uh, wanted to develop um, some communities here, um, this was one of them, right? Right. Greenbelt communities. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Okay, uh, in 1936, there was three communities built in the, in the United States. Uh, one of them was Green Hills, Ohio. They looked at three different um, locations in Cincinnati area, and they decided on this one in Hamilton County. Um, and then in 1936, they researched the deeds and they started buying properties and all the farm ground uh, to Now, create. why did they choose this area? Um, because of the rolling hills, the woods and the creeks and things, which would have made good for um, the village to uh, have the streets and circles and curves and things and ups and downs through the hills. Uh, and then it also made for the parks that, and the woods that was around. And then the north of the uh, village was more or less flat farmland which then they were going to keep as farmland. Okay, so the idea was to bring families in um, and into this area, but to keep the farmland around for them to provide um, produce. Produce, eggs, uh, and other fruits and things like that for the co-op store that was in the village then. So. Each little section of the streets were had started with an A, then a B, a C, a D, an E, an F. Um, and they kind of made little separate areas there. And then within that, um, those sections of the village, uh, they created what they called pocket parks. Um, and these parks had swings, slides, sandbox, and area to play baseball and softball and things like that. Uh, and of course, there was rules about that that you couldn't play hardball because hardballs broke windows <laughs> when you hit them too far. Um, and the idea was to make it safe for the families. In other words, it was a, a safety factor that the children play in the street. And so family. tell me about the farms in the community. Okay, then the, the government left north of the village was pretty much flat area. They left those as farms uh, and they selected people to live on the farms and I'm assuming it was people that were interested in farming. Um, and they um, had their cows, they had their dairy cows, they had pigs, they had um, chickens, um, they raised fruits and vegetables and things, and this was the idea that these farms would bring produce and things into the co-op to be sold, and would help supply the co-op with um, fresh produce and like that. Now, what ended up happening with the farming community around? Okay, the, um, <clears throat> I can't remember the year, but the government decided they were going to sell the property and the um, the Green Hills, there was a corporation um, or an association um, started that um, got the money together by the village. And then the people that lived in a house, like my father, he had first choice on that house to buy it. And if he didn't want it, then it was open to anybody else to buy it. Were there any interesting things about the farms? Okay, they're, the farmers that they, they did that lived on the farms and farmed the grounds, they could not add to the farm another way. They could not put up a new barn, they couldn't put up a new chicken house. They had to get special permission from the government to do that. So they were restricted on what they could really do with the land. There's one I heard about that the farmer, his chicken business got larger, he wanted to build an additional chicken coop, and he had a big rigmarole to go through with the government to even get that built. Uh, but the other thing is, did he that get that bill? I that didn't the information I had didn't get into that whether he got to do it or not. We did buy milk from a farmer uh, north on Winton Road. That my father would go in the evening when they were milking with his two gallon jugs and get fresh, unpasteurized whole milk. So we grew up on unpasteurized milk. Wow. But that was one of the things that you know you could go to these farms and get. You could go there and get your produce, a few things that they sold too. 
Thanks, Wendell, for coming out and meeting with us today. And thank you for joining us for another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.